just so you know, fiberglass and diamond plate tread do not mix very well. Got to figure out a solution to keep from scuffing this boat up coming on this diamond plate. It's actually a wider gap now than when I bought the boat. When I bought it, you could barely get your finger in between here. And as you can imagine, you can't really get on the trailer straight all the time, every time. They didn't really leave much room for error. I feel like the dealership that sold it to me should have set it up a little differently. But that's what we got, so we're going to try to fix it. Ate up pretty good on this side. Rubbing. I even asked Stingray if they felt like it was their problem to fix, and they didn't feel like it was on them. I may start off trying to put me some kind of fender rub here. Another option I have here is I could potentially re-drill holes in my bumper there and then take the boat off the trailer and raise it up a hole or two then the ones up front they're just adjustable won't be very hard to do I just have to go to the lake on and off a couple times probably get it figured out and one other thing I have to worry about is the amount of clearance that I have on top of my shed up there. I've only got about four and a half, five inches of clearance when I'm backing in, so. All right, we got the fender off the boat. Uh, this is the side that we need to try to worry about protecting. I've got some kind of landscape irrigation hose I found in the shop, just had left over. I'm going to use it. I'm probably going to try to run, run two strands. Try to lay it out along the inside and then I'll come back and run a second strand there. Got some number six by half inch screws, stainless steel flathead screws that I'm going to use to hold it down every so often. Start here, just cut us a length first. stuff right here see it's got for whatever reason got three different sections in it so I think them that will actually help kind of act as an absorber absorption factor whenever the boat hits that I should be able to just mold it like that a couple different times go all the way down well, I never really had to worry about it rubbing up front hardly. The main spot it's going to rub is right here on the, this is the back, say this was the back of the trailer, the boat pulling up. This is the left fender, the boat pulling in. At any time I got to worry about it rubbing, it's going to be right in here the first 6, 12 inches of that fender there. I have to drill me some pilot holes with these screws when I'm going to try to go in right in the center channel there. Just make me a couple marks. And I'll just drill through. Put the screw in. In case you're wondering, that's an eighth inch drill bit for these number six flathead screws I'm going to use. We'll give it a test run, make sure it's got a little bit of room for allowing the screw to grip. Oh yeah, that seems to suck down pretty well. And my thought is there that I'm going to be able to suck it down enough to where that flathead of that screw is not sticking out so that way if the boat were to 
bump here, I'm not having to worry about that screw head actually doing the damage versus that diamond tread. Trying to miss where my diamond plate tread are just because it'd be a little harder to get through there. So just checking that every now and then and staggering that. to that first through that first layer that may even be better suck it all the way down and then I don't have to worry about it scuffing at all which again that'd be fine for here because this is the main part right here I gotta worry about so if I don't want any screw head sticking up it'd be right in here Probably don't need to be about every eight inches apart or so. All right, now I'm going to measure it just to make it really synchronized on both sides. Cut it off over here. About 10 inches. with another layer up top and we'll lay it in there like that stack it in there and do the same thing I did is push it together tighten up to where it almost gives it a little bit higher seam right there where them two pieces meet Give it a real nice smooth edge all the way down through here. I just make sure I don't have any metal flakes or shavings up there. I think it's good to go. Alright, that's a wrap on this one, I believe. I'll do the other fender the same exact way. Take it off, bring it into the shop, work on it. And again, uh, this is something I think that Stingray or the boat dealership that I bought the boat from, as much as you spend on the boat, you think that they'd cover something like that under warranty and then they finally came back saying that they wouldn't can maybe upset uh, especially seeing that the boat trailer was set up incorrectly from the manufacturer uh, so we'll worry about that gel coat repairs later on but this is a cheap way I can get just something I had in the shop uh, it actually matches almost matches the boat color I don't think it'll look too bad once I put it on there. Most of the time it'll be hidden anyway. And just give me peace of mind of, that I'm not messing up the gel coat every time I come on and off the trailer anymore. I think I have maybe seven bucks in the screws. So, pretty cheap fix. Thanks for watching, guys. Stick around, see what we get into next.